Vandami Bante, good morning everyone. Good evening to everyone in the Western Hemisphere. Welcome to lesson three on reality and truth in Abhidhamma. Today's lesson is scheduled to last for one and a half hours with 50 minutes on coursework and remaining 40 minutes on Q&A. I'm Tiong Han and I will be the meeting co-host who will be helping Bante and everyone in today's lesson. May we invite Bante to start the teaching, please. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay, this is the auspicious time. So let's get our lesson by paying homage to the Buddha reciting the Mottasa three times. Namotasa Bhagavado Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Okay, welcome back everyone for the lesson three. In this lesson, I'm going to explain about the reality and truths in Abhidhamma. Just before we continue to this present lesson three, just trying to recall what we have studied in the lesson one and lesson two. So lesson one, we I met and I just introduced about the Abhidhamma. And in second lesson, I managed to explain about the 31 plane of existence. Because the beings are living in the 31 plane of existence, as well as as we regarded the beings based on the existence. So understanding the 31 plane of existence is very important as long as we have to run around the samsara. So here in this in this life, all the participants was born as a human being. So we live as a human beings, but we must have the previous life within the 31 plane of existence. Thus, we come from any of the 31 plane of existence. Then if we have condition, condition to give rise a new life, we will be reborn in any of 31 plane of existence. I'm trying to recall what we, are, we have studied in the les second lesson. So I think some of our members missed some explanation about the 31 plane of existence. And so this time I'm going to continue about the reality and truths in the Abhidhamma. And I'd like to, to roughly introduce again our, our course design. So the lesson one, two, three, and number five, these lessons are to organize the basics understanding, so background understanding, in order to have the proper understanding when I explain about the specific topics of Abhidhamma, Abhidhamma Tassangaha especially. So we need to keep some information before we continue our study in the specific session. That's why I'm planning lesson one, two, three, and five. So in lesson four, we are I'm going to explain about the 89 consciousness. We will go there in this way, the specific stat, specific topics. Under that, we will classify the types of the Abhidhamma teachings, the types of the reality mentioned in the Abhidhamma teaching. So this lesson also, although I included some information, these are not directly related to our level one and two. Level one and two, and especially the Wa Panyati. So here, that way includes one type of truth. It in, in two types of truth, there will have 
one truth, which is called the conventional truth. That is not directly relevant in the lesson and level one and two. It will include in the level three. But I'm trying to explain here very early. But this information will give you the proper consideration when we study our specific lesson. That's I, I'm trying to manage here. So if you don't understand, if you don't fully understand about this lesson, please be patient and don't be absurd and don't be complicated. Just trying to keep whatever you can understand in this lesson and then previous two lessons. So I'm going to continue our today's study. So today the focus is realities and two truths. So I will continue, I will, I will explain about the truth first. So true, we call in Pali, Satcha. So here, two types of true. As I mentioned in the lesson one, this slide already show in the lesson one, but we need to review to understand properly. This, we will go further in this lesson than lesson one. So here's Samuti Satcha and Pramata Satcha. Samuti Satcha in English, convention, conventional true. Pramata Satcha, ultimate true. What is conventional true? Names, name of what the things and being Name of the things and beings. These are called samus, samuti sacha, conventional truth. They, they are true. If you name something by any concept, conceptual name, it is true according to your, your common sense. So names of the things and name of the beings these are called Samuti Saja. Okay, we will understand later in more detail. So this is the conceptual thought. So if we name as the living being, person, man, woman, animals, many of the names we can find around us, these all are conventional true, not really a zidin. It appear because we name. The second types of true is ultimate true. They are really existing in the ultimate sense. The four types of ultimate true are given in this slide. And also in the Abhidhamata Sangha, these four types of ultimate true are mentioned. The first one, consciousness. So consciousness, second one, manifests in common sense. Together, the consciousness and mental factors are collectively understood, understood as, as the mind. And the third one is matter or physical phenomena. These two, these three types. So, but in this case, I divide it into two again. So consciousness and mental factors together can be called mentalities. So we also, in common sense, understand minds, my minds and your minds like this. So that that was my mind in this case. Mind refers to the combination of consciousness and mental factors. We are reference consciousness and mental factor by the word mind, my mind or your mind in the common sense. And the third one, your body of the, the other's body, like this. This is, this, that is called a group of materiality, aggregate of materiality, you are referenced as the body. So if we analyze ourselves, we can find mind and physical body, that's all. So mind is, mind can be divided into two in the specific ultimate truth. First one, consciousness, mental factors. So we will learn what is consciousness in the specific meaning. So here I will introduce the consciousness is the basic elements 
to and to aware the object. So when you talk about the mind, there must be any object of the mind. Without the object, mind cannot arise. So you cannot have the mind moment without any objects. So every mind moment have the object. So in this case, as I say, the mind what we refer to is the combination of consciousness and mental factors. Among them, the consciousness, the function of consciousness is aware. The work of consciousness is aware to the object. You can keep the information about the consciousness with something aware to the object that is consciousness. And the other function of your mind are mental feathers, the work of mental feathers. Sometimes you feel happy and you feel unhappy. You feel the, the, to say the heaviness of the mind or something like this. And you have the very active mind, the function of active, of heavy, heaviness, and happy or unhappy. These all are the function of mental factors. So in combination of consciousness and mental factors, we understand in common sense, we understand our mind or your mind. But anyway, these two are ultimate truth. They really exist. They really exist. That's why they are called ultimate truth. It is different from the conventional truth. And the third one, matter also, you have the body that is the aggregate or the group of physical phenomena or materialities that also really exists. That's why the consciousness, mental feathers, and matter, these three are ultimate truth. And the last one, Nibbana. Although you cannot touch the, okay, the fourth noble truth, the, sorry, the fourth ultimate truth of Nibbana, although you cannot feel in common sense, but it really exists in its own nature, but it's not easy to understand. Anyway, the Nibbana also, the ultimate truth, it really exists in ultimate things. That's why we have the four types of realities. In other way, four types of ultimate truth under the category of Paramatha Satya, ultimate truth. So in this slide i have already mentioned in lesson one but i will repeat it again in short the three of ultimate truth consciousness mental factors and matters in collectively we call that in two category aggregates of mentality and aggregate of materialities we can classify into five aggregate in the pali these are called the panchakanda but nibbana is not under the classification of aggregates. So aggregates we belong to, cause the panchakanda, five aggregates, are much easier to understand, find the common knowledge. So in other way, these are called the conditional reality, conditioned by their specific condition. So the karma or citta, and karma is the, the potency of the, the karma and consciousness and heat or cold temperatures, utu and nutriment, nutritive essence. These are usually regarded as the condition. And also, according to the Patana, there are many conditions to give rise to specific reality. So anyway, the three types of ultimate truth or two types of aggregate of mentality and materiality, or in other way, five aggregates. These are called conditional reality. So they really exist. And Nibbana is unconditional reality. That still reality really exists, but really, I want to say they're really true, ultimate true, but not conditional reality. It's called the Asankata Dadu. So here, which is called reality, ultimate reality is the paramatha so being constant if you refer to if you say about the meaning of the paramatha of reality some aspect to consider they are real essence not just the name real essence and we will define how they be, how they are in real essence and being constant they are they cannot change 
they cannot they cannot change into another form of another elements and they are very stiff and unchanging so this is the parameter in order to classify from the samuti such a compassion and true here in abhidhamata abhidhamata and paramata i have already give this list also in the lesson 1 so the chitta chitasika rupa and nibbana the meaning of chitta to cognize or uh, aware the object but it is divided into 89 in briefly and 121 but there when we study in lesson 4 we will understand this and chitasika meant the fetters the here you have to note arise along with consciousness so consciousness and mental factors arise together mental factors perform the different functions they perform the different function as i mentioned so happy or unhappy etc then rupa is material phenomena so these are deformed by the cool or heat and nibbana this is ultimate peace and the last one panyati so here one to four are uh, the ultimate reality ultimate reality or absolute truth so i want like to connect with the real nature of the universe by the abhidhamas understanding so now we understand there are two types of truth the conventional truth and ultimate truth so to understand to, for more understanding about the these two truth we have to connect with the things and being what we have know in common sense So here we are going to investigate into the nature. So the whole universe can be divided into two beings or things, being and things. Whatever animates, we call the beings. Maybe the human beings, a deva or Brahma or animals or the small animals like this. These all are animate. They have the life of mentality, and this is called animates. The beings usually refers to the animate. that has a sampling of the factors of mental and physical process this is general expression as i mentioned in the lesson 2 so some of our members need to know about these three types of of being the first types of being only has the materialities and another type second types of being only have the mentalities and the third type have both mentality and materiality here in this slide i refer to the general meaning of the beings so the beings is a sampling of factors of mental and physical process so what i say the process is ever changing so replacing not is it in all the time our body since we were born as a human our body we think in common sense our body is it our body come to grow up but actually this is the process of physical phenomena previous one arise present and vanish the following one take place because the process is very fast we cannot aware in common sense so we think this the body is all the time is there in all the time but anyway if we study if we observe from the abhidhamma side the abhidhamma understanding that there is the process the following one that is taking place in the previous one's place okay so the assemblage of the factors of mental and physical process mental process and physical process coming together we understand that is the beings so and uh, the third type of beings those have both mentality and materialities in this case we understand for ourselves at the beginning just to consider about the human beings a human being has the process of mentalities so we understand we have the mind that is the process of mentality and also human being has the process of physical body physical phenomena we understand that is our body so we have mind and body that is the mental process and physical process so here beings refers to the mental process and physical process then the things you mentioned that define us the inanimate not living so just like a chair or desk or house or something not living these are assemblage of factors of physical process so there's no mentality so this is the difference beings and things but some exception will be 
in in case of Aruba Wajara, there's no materiality, only the mentality. And as we mentioned in lesson two, the Asanya Sada, that being has only the physical process, not mental process. So this will be exception in this definition. But in common sense, we can understand in this way, being is the combination of two process of mentality and physical physical phenomenal and that things are only physical process so in this way we can analyze the whole universe this is the beings and this is the things a being has a two process and things have only one process of materiality okay so both of them beings and things are in the process why they are in the process so according to the impermanent nature so realities the condition of realities, they have the nature of impermanence, impermanence changing. That's why the previous one appear and disappear. The following one appear and disappear. In this way, they are in the process, impermanence. That's why replacing. So given the many walls, but I'm reference to the same meaning, just to understand the process, not existing. Okay, so we give the conceptual name so as a being or as a thing or for the being that's a woman or man of the child of adult or something else we give the name that's why in common sense our understanding touch to the name so the, the name is put in the assemblage in the groove that's why our common sense just touch to the conventional truth, not ultimate truth. So in order to understand the ultimate truth, you need to overcome the common understanding, common touch into the conventional truth. So through the, by the power of wisdom, of knowledge, you can penetrate. This is the assemblage or this is the group and something is given by the name of man or woman. So we analyze the man is the process of mentality and materiality. So our our understanding penetrate the coverage of the cover of the conceptual truth. So conceptual knowledge and notion are removed by the wisdom. Then you touch to the ultimate truth, ultimate reality, and then you can classify this is the mentality and this is the materiality in your in your own bodies. So the ultimate truth, ultimate reality, they have the intrinsic nature, sabawa. So if you can penetrate, find the wisdom, you can find, you can find the ultimate. These are matter, consciousness, mental fella in this way. So matters, the process of mentality, if you observe, that this is very you know, clear for the vipassana practitioner. They can analyze. Anyway, in the study also, we can try to understand. So the matter, materiality, then consciousness and mental feathers are collectively called the process of mentality. So let's continue to for more understanding about the Samuti Satya because the conventional truth. So this is the conceptual thought compassionate to not really existing but it is true in the compassionate things because it is the products of mental construction mental construction in Pali it is called a brikapana so something given in your mind the previous time this that is named as the man when you consider about the war what is the meaning of the war man so that creation, the, the products come, the mental construction constructs the appearance of the man. So that is just the name. So that is the that is true in conventional things, but not really existing. The man is the name of the being. This conceptual knowledge, it is true, but it does not exist in their own right as irreducible reality. So so the man can be divided into two processes. So it is reducible. The man is reducible. So if we divide it, this is the process of materiality and this is the process of mentality. So there's no more man. At the same way, in, at the same, in the same way, the beings of animals, other, other beings of animals and they were also same. 
So if you divide it into two process of this mentality and materiality, there's no more beings. That is why they are not existing in irreducible reality. They are reducible. You can reduce by dividing into the, the constituents of them. So not here in the slide I share, I drop this one. Not the same as, same as, the same as. Not the same as realities existing by reason of their own nature. It means the reality are existing, uh, ultimate reality are existing by reason of their own nature. So we will understand in the Paramatha Satcha. So this is the uh, the definition for the Samuti Satcha to, to understand what is the conventional truth. So in the Samuti Satcha and the Paramatha Satcha together, we can classify in this way. So Paramatha Satcha, in first slide, I'm classify into two, two types. One is conditioned reality, and another one is unconditioned reality of Nibbana. So conditioned reality include the mind and matter, so materiality and mentality. So both of the materiality and mentality have the three phases. You can understand the three phases of existence. So arising, present, and dissolution. So this refers to the impermanent, impermanence nature. Something has the arising, present, and dissolution that is impermanent. So the conditioned reality has a three phase. But unconditioned reality of Nibbana does not have arising, present, or dissolution. But this type of Samuti Satya, a conceptual thought, also does not have three phases of existence. So no arising. The man, you consider, in the past also is given the, the man. Future also may, will be given the name of the man, but it is timeless. So conceptual knowledge, timeless. Conceptual truth is timeless. The ultimate truth can be divided into two. The conditioned realities are with the three phases and unconditional reality, Nibbana does not have the three phases. Okay, let's continue to the Paramatha Satcha, ultimate truth. So the word Paramatha, I'm trying to explain the Brahma and Atta. Brahma usually in Pali war refers to the noble one or great. But in this case, the war Brahma refers to the ultimate or final. So that's why the war Brahmata refers to the final, the Brahmata such as irreducible or final essence, the reality. Yeah, the ultimate true means something that is true according to the ultimate sense four types of truths. They are true according to the ultimate things. Consciousness, mental feathers, matter, and nibbana. So these are, as they are the final dharma, final essence, they are irreducible components of existence. You cannot reduce them again. So no further reduction, final term of analyze. Every feathers of Paramatha, ultimate truth, ultimate reality, they have their own nature. You cannot devise it again to change through their nature. So these are called ultimate truth. They exist in the nature. For example, as I said, the consciousness, it aware to the object, it never changes. Whenever the, it, the consciousness arises, that arises only in its nature to aware the objects. And also, we, you will understand more and more in, in the Abhidharma study, if we study about the uh, specific feathers of uh, mental feathers, specific mental feathers, like a feeling or something, of context, perception, volition, etc. And they will exist in their own nature. That's why they are called the ultimate reality. So this is the general meaning. So you may not understand the whole meaning of the Paramatha only in this life. But after studying the other's lesson, you will understand why they are called the Paramatha and differentiate from the, from the conventional truth. So they can be proved by the characteristic function, manifestation, and proximate cause. So this is also different from the conventional truth. Conventional truth, you cannot 
approved by the characteristic function manifestation of proximate cause because they don't exist in the nature. They don't have three phases of existence too. This is the difference between the conventional true and ultimate true. Just to consider about the, the, the things and being you know in common sense is much more easier to understand. The literal meaning sometimes not easy to understand. But if we classify the beings in our our com common understanding, so this is the being, this is called a being in the in the combination. So if we divide this mentality and materiality, no more beings. This is a mat materiality and this is mentality. But materiality also we can divide this into they are they are ultimate things, no more process like this. So these all the the conventional truths are reducible, but the ultimate truth are irreducible because they is it in their own nature. So for more understanding about these the differences, we will continue to study about the concept panyati. So this is in the page number uh, three two five to three two eight. So this is this this session is included in the uh, third level, third ordinary level of the examination. So you don't need to memorize everything in this slide, but you can you can capture the meaning to apply in our further study. So. There are two types of panyati. One is Atta panyati in Pali, and second one is Nama panyati. So concept of meaning and concept of name, as name. So meaning and name. Usually the meanings first, and then we give the name to us according to the name, according to the meaning. We name, this is man because of this meaning, or this is woman because of this meaning like this. So meaning and name, first one. Okay, let's continue about the first one, explanation of the past concept as meanings. So here the the list is given, land, mountain, etc. They are named as in this way, named because of this, uh, these are panyati. So concept as meaning. So land refers to, the, this is the Santana Panyati, the formal concept. Because land, the name land come through the the concept of form. So when you see in this way, you, you understand this is the land. When you see in the uh, groove of the stone of uh, stone of the, the earth, you understand this is the mountain in this way. And also this is, depends on the form. So this all land and mountain are named based on their form. When you see the flat, this is called the land. And when you see uh, the, the higher place, and this is called the mountain in this way. So they, based on the form, that is called the Santana Panyati. So as this is the concept, you can divide it into, and if you remove the stone of the, the mountain, so that will disappear, no more mountain. In this way, we understand that is concept. And the second types of concept is Samuha Panyati. These are collectively named. So collective concept, the house, chariot, cut, etc. The mood of the formation of materials. So for example, the house, if you disarrange the parts of the house, there will not be the house anymore. Uh, in the same way, if you uninstall the cars, the parts of the car, no more car. So the car, the word cars or the name car is given in the group. That's why there is this type of concept is called the collective concept. The person also in the same way, the person of individual account of five aggregates. So coming together, five aggregates, we call this is the person or this is the individual. So when the person dies, we regard no more mentality in this body, it become the separate of the mental aggregate and material aggregate. So this is called the person collectively called the person if we divide it the person we get the five aggregates so this is the the material aggregates and this is the feeling aggregates and this is perception aggregate the mental formation aggregates 
and consciousness aggregate in this way. And as mentioned in the in the chart of the aggregate, you can divide us divide the person into the aggregate because the person is called collectively five aggregates. Then another types of <coughs> concept, disa or kala. So disa is local concept. Local concept, direction, east, west, north, etc. You depends on the location. So this is called the local concept. And times also, this temporary concept is the units of the hours. You, you saw the one hour, two hours, or days, or years in this way. These are these all are concept. Then another type of concept is well keeps, etc. Agasa, spatial concept. Depends on the space. It is name. Depends on the space. So without the, the space, you cannot say this is the cave. So the cave, the name of the cave comes through the space. That's why this, this type of concept is called the spatial concept. Then the last one, casino. So when you practice the concentration meditation, samatha meditation, and then you take the object of casino and the round shape of the art casino and then you take it to appear in the mind. It becomes the sign of the meditation, your meditation practice. That is called the casino sign. That's sign concept. Just depends on the, the conceptual thought. So these are uh, first types of concept, which is called the concepts as meanings. So they derive to the meaning, but they do not exist in the ultimate things. As I mentioned in the, the previous slides, all the concepts do not exist in the ultimate things. So they do not exist, but they exist in the mind, in the concept. That's why they are called the conceptual knowledge, conceptual truth. So although they do not exist in ultimate sin, they cannot arise without the the connection with the ultimate reality. So that is why they can be regarded as in the form of the shadow of ultimate things. So our consciousness take the shadow of the ultimate thing and then give the name. So as in case of the individual, although there is no individual in ultimate sin, we, we take the the shadow of the ultimate reality of mental process and mental mental material process and then according to the col the collection a combination and then we take that combination and in the mind and give the name of person of individual in this way so the concept based on the shadow of ultimate things so it is designed in the worldly convention Worldly convention. So it is given in different names, but sometimes it changes. So the, even the chair, the form is same, but uh, they are given in different names, in different languages. So because they are fashioned by the worldly convention. So English speaker called chair and Chinese speaker will call them in different ways. And Bami speaker, they call it in different way in this way. So these names depends on the worldly convention. So the second types of consciousness, just to understand, uh, roughly understand it. So you don't need to analyze in details. I will introduce short in short. So there are six types of concept as name. So Nama Panyati. In other way, it is called the Sadha Banyati. This is these are the name. So the name which are Mana Banyati. Here you have to focus on the, this part, matter feeling. So matter is included under the category of ultimate reality. That is why matter is really existing. But the name is not reality. The reality is the phenomenon. Um, we give the name of that reality, Mera. That is a kind of cons name, Panyati name. But based on the really existing Vijamana, so based on the real, this name based on the real. 
feeling. So feeling is really exceeding, but the name feeling is concept. So the second one, based on unreal, land or mountain, as I mentioned, there's no land that in the ultimate things. So these are unreal, based on unreal. So the third one, based on the possessor of sixfold direct knowledge. So here, here in this case, the sixfold direct knowledge is really exceeding. This is the power of the, the consciousness and manifestors, mentalities. So direct, sixfold direct knowledge is it really is it in the ultimate thing. So this is the real, but the name is unreal. The processor, processor, there's no processor because there's no individual or no person in ultimate things. So the, the name, the complete name is processor. So the processor complete name is unreal, but is based on the real. Real is it in cispo direct knowledge. This is the three, that number three types of concept. Okay, let's continue to number four. Woman's voice. So woman, there's no woman in ultimate sense, but the voice really is it. The voice is a kind of materialities. So these are types of, of name. So if we understand woman's voice, so the voice is the meaning, the, the final meaning. So this is real, but based on unreal, unreal is it in, of women. Then the next one, Eye consciousness. This is in both sides. This uh, this is uh, real in both sides. So I and consciousness. I is a kind of materiality, I sensitivity, and consciousness is mentality. So both are in real. So I consciousness, we get the consciousness, but uh, this the both are real. I also the really is it in, in the ultimate sin, and the consciousness also really is it in, in the ultimate sin. And the less types of consciousness, kin's son. So kin also refers to a types of person. So there's no is it in, in that way. And a son also reference to the person. So that also not is it in, in the ultimate sin. This is the two types of, of concept. Okay. So I already mentioned about the two types of truths shown in the uh, Abhidhamma and another there is another types of truth which is called the noble truth. This is very important truth. We will learn more and more about this truth. But here I would like to introduce noble truth because it has the same name of the truth. So noble truth. In the name, the first one is Dukkha Satcha, the noble truth of suffering, Smuriya Satcha, the noble truth of the origin of suffering, and the thought, Nirodha Satcha, the noble truth of succession of suffering, and Maga Satcha, the noble truth of the path leading to the succession of suffering. This is the, the very common expression. Many of our Buddhist people already understood the full noble truth in name. But here, the ultimate reality. Name refers to the realities. So the noble truth of suffering refers to specific reality. Here in this class, you don't need to understand all the reality in connection with their name. So just trying to understand the noble truth, name of the noble truth and why they are called true. I would like to emphasize on the, the true. The given the name of the true to these four because they are penetrated by the noble one. So as you know, the ordinary person and noble one. Ordinary person is Putrajana and noble one is called the Ariya, Ariya Bukala. So Putrajana practice the Vipassana meditation attain the enlightenment and he or she becomes a noble one. So these noble true are penetrated by the noble one. That's why they are called the noble true. And the second definition, because they are true, touched by the supreme noble one, reference to the Buddha. So the Buddha is pondered about the noble truth. That is why they are called the noble truth. 
And the third one, discovery. Their discovery leads to the state of the noble one. So when you discover in your experience, discover the noble truth in your own experience. So that leads to, that discovery leads you to the state of noble one. It means if you realize and if you realize this noble truth in proper way, you will become a noble one. And that's why they are called the noble truth. And the last one, because they are real, unalterable, and deceptive truth. So that truth about the existence. So for example, the Dukkha Satcha, the noble truth of suffering. In the Sutta explanation, is come Jadi bi Dukkha, Jarabi Dukkha, etc. So Jadi refers to the bath. Bath is suffering. Jara decays or aging is suffering. Although it is defined that the birth or aging or death, etc., in the Sutta, but in the ultimate sense, according to the ultimate reality, that all types of suffering refers to the mundane consciousness, 81 types of mundane consciousness, or the mental factors and matters, 28 matters. So in this way, we can understand in common sense, so suffering. What is suffering? According to the Sutta, Sutta explanation comes to relate to the our common sense. That is all the birth or aging or death or associating with the, how to say, the enemies or like this, and dissociated with the beloved one like this. So it's related to the our common sense. Here, the ultimate things does not change in that way just emphasize on the ultimate reality we will study in the next lessons about the ultimate sense. after studying you will know how to classify according to the ultimate reality these are called in Burmese a yaka so we take off the ultimate essence through the name and through the event uh, in your daily life so in this case i'm already introduce the four noble truths. So here in this lesson, we already studied about the conventional truth and ultimate truth. Then another category of truth, noble truth. Then reality, which is called the Paramatha Satcha. So Paramatha Satcha is called the reality. Okay, so here I'm going to stop my explanation and let's continue to the Q&A. So, okay, let's share our merit today to other audience. So, Imina Punya Kamina Mami Bala Samagamo Saddam Samagamo Hodu Dawa Nibana Badia Idami Bunyam Asawakaya Waham Hodu Idami punya nibana sapa jayo hodu. Ama punya bagam taba satanam baji mi. Isa bi. Isa mam. Punya bagam labandu. Sadu. 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 Thank you, Bante, and everyone for your time and participation. Till we meet on next Sunday, may all be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May all be happy and happy.